You're hosting a football party in your backyard. Barbecue, beer, really good game. Everybody's having a great time. And then out of nowhere, two mass shooters barge in through the unlocked gate and start shooting randomly at your guests with semi-automatic guns. And this is just what happened in Fresno. Welcome to this week's ACS Safety First episode on home invasions. If this type of video interests you, then please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for instant notifications. I'm your host, Bobby Marqueso, and you know, I'm a former police officer and a huge football fan, so the Fresno shooting hit very close to home. And it's yet another reminder of just what a crazy unsafe world we live in. Do you know that there are 1.6 million home break-ins in the U.S every year, and that firearms and other weapons are used in 50% of those invasions. So you ask yourself, will I be the next victim? Naturally, you want to know how to best protect yourself and your loved ones. Today, we meet with Lieutenant Chris Cano. Now, Chris has an impressive background. He's an investigation bureau commander, which oversees the detective bureau, narcotics unit, the gang team, all at his police station. He also has many years in law enforcement, emergency management, and homeland security. Now, Chris is going to tell us how to best prevent home invasions, but also how to be prepared in case our homes do get invaded. Chris, hello, sir. Welcome to the show. I just want to jump right in. What makes a home an appealing target to an invader? What any home invader is looking for is easy cash, credit cards, and jewelry. They want in and out, something that they can carry, throw into a vehicle, and get the heck out of there. That's what they're looking for. Now, what makes a home appealing is when it looks like it's an easy target, when there is no security system, there's no security cameras, and it just looks vulnerable, and that's what they're looking for. They want a quick in and out. Okay, so what should you do then? The first thing I always tell people is they should invest in some type of security monitoring system, quite simply. I mean, how much value do you put on security of your loved ones, on yourself? That's the first thing you should do. Most of these security companies will install cameras, a panic alarm system, pretty much anything that they feel you need to keep yourself safe. Because remember, no home is the same as the other home. You may have different needs than your next door neighbor. So call in the experts so they can evaluate what your home needs are. So then if all the alarm systems and, and home monitoring systems are so affordable and easy to obtain nowadays, is it a good idea for us to install it ourselves if we can? See, here's the problem is these cameras and monitoring systems, I think they're great if you wanna know what your dog's doing in the afternoon when you're at work. But oftentimes when we do get these notifications from homeowners and business owners as well, the video is minutes if not hours old. Mm -hmm. That's part of the problem. By actually having a security system that's monitored 24 seven, they're gonna get the alert and then they're gonna decide, do they send their uniform patrol out? Do they call the police? Do they notify the homeowner? These are all things they have been trained to do. Right, and so hopefully that gives you peace of mind when you're gone. Like if your house is vacated, business travel, vacations with your family. If you're going on vacation or you are going out of country long term, invest in a uniform patrol. When these bad guys are casing your home, because sometimes they'll case for days on end, they see that security vehicle pull up to check your doors and your windows, they're going on to the next house. When they see the sign that your house is being monitored by a security company, they're going on to the next house. As they make their way to your front door, back door, your windows, and they have the stickers, 24 hour surveillance, armed, unarmed response, they're gonna to go to the next house. Thieves and these would-be home invaders they do not want to be detected, and that's what they're trying to avoid. And you said sometimes they can stalk out the house or the, the people for days on end. I've heard them uh, spying on people for weeks before they actually strike. I mean, is that, is that really the case? It is. They look at these houses, and they start looking at what's parked in front. Mercedes, BMW. What kind of cars? These cars give the impression that there is cash and valuables inside of that house. So why would they not want to take that extra time to case the house, see what your habits are? Do you take the same way in and out when you leave your house? Do you park in the same position? Or do any cars move in the driveway? These are all things they're watching. They watch what time you leave and what time you get home. If they think the cash cow is going there or the payday is going to be quite substantial, they'll spend a lot of time. Remember, this is their job. 
Your job is to go out and do your job. Their job is to case you, victimize you, and take your belongings. Let's say you've done everything you can to prevent a home invasion, but then again, like I say, some criminals outsmart the security devices or just, you know, even simply show up at your door. So what are some of the ways that our viewers can prepare in the event of a, of a home invasion? In the neighborhood I live in, these home invaders were waiting to homeowners were cutting their lawn. You start cutting your lawn, you go take a break, go inside the house, you leave the garage door open, and boom, home invasion. That's the stuff that they do. We're also getting reports of people dressed in FedEx uniforms, UPS uniforms, and the United States Postal uniforms. They're coming to the door with the package. You're thinking that you have to sign for it. You open up your door because you see the uniform. Heck, we even see people dressed as police officers these days. Okay, so there are so many different things that they can do to get inside your house. And you know what? Long story short, if they want in your house, they're going to get in your house no matter what you do. So once they're in your house, you got to have a plan. You got to sit down with your family and you have to make a plan. What is it we're going to do? Like the security pad. I remember when I first got my first security system for my house, I had to dial four numbers for a panic alarm. I was like, okay, and let's just hope I can remember those four numbers if someone comes inside my house. Right. I'm a big fan of that panic alarm single button because as I'm running to try to hide or as one of my children are trying to run to hide, they can hit the button and go hide and then everyone is being notified because now the world is coming. And it's difficult too because you're a trained professional. And so if it's difficult for you in a panic type situation to try to remember four numbers, the average household, it's gonna be rather difficult because there's gonna be a lot of stress in the situation. That's, that's correct, Bobby. Yeah. So the second layer is having a plan inside of your house. If you scream at your children that hide, your kids should know where to go. They should have a plan. If they're upstairs, do they throw the security ladder outside the window to escape to the backyard? What is it they do? you got to have a plan. No plan, it's not going to go well for you. Remember, hope is not a plan. Shouldn't we also make sure that our kids just do not open the door unless they're 100% sure that they're going to be safe? I would actually tell parents they should never have their kids open the door. Okay, that's the, that's the first, that's probably the first preventative, but it's going to happen. This is why, once again, I'm going to go back to the panic alarm button thing. If something does happen, a family member can alert their family members by a simple scream. At this point in time, because you have planned in your home, anybody in the house can go ahead and hit one of those panic alarms. As a matter of fact, we recommend panic alarms in every one of the rooms, as well as areas where a child can get to them. Remember, children like to hide under beds and closets. No matter the amount of planning that a family does, you got to think like a child. Where is a child going to feel safe? These are the two places they feel safe. So heck, put your panic alarm in those, one of those two places. Right. Let's talk a little bit about when the police arrive. So the family, let's say, unfortunately, if they're held hostage by armed invaders and someone was able to hit the panic button, one would think that maybe the arrival of the police or hearing the sirens in the distance might cause the invaders to panic and wouldn't that actually put the family's lives in danger? I think a lot of people think that but I'm going to talk based upon my experience. I'm the SWAT commander so the our crisis negotiation team which handles negotiations in these types of scenarios I'm responsible for them. I have yet to have anybody hurt anybody inside of the house when they're still inside of there. These thieves are generally, yeah, they've used guns and stuff to get inside the house, but they don't want to make their situation worse. Oftentimes, they just want to get away. But here's the thing that, depending on the city you live in, the police agency that monitors where your residence is, is that my city, we respond with lights and siren. We alert the bad guys that were coming. And people might say, well, why, why do you want to do that? Don't you want to catch them? Yeah, I want to catch them. However, I want the family to be safe. So I want them to know that I'm coming so that they will leave. They'll leave the residence to try to, you know, obviously get away from being caught. That's their, that's their goal in the reality of all of this. So we come with lights and siren. We want them to get away. So when we think about is this going to cause some type of kidnapping or hostage situation, about 99% of the time, no. And now for maybe some of the little bit, uh, kind of some scary stuff on the, on the more serious side. How should you react? Let's say you open the door and you're forced back into your house at gunpoint. What, what would you do? Well, you do what they tell you to do. There's nothing in that house. There's no amount of cash. There's no amount of jewelry. 
family heirlooms. There's nothing in that house that's more important than your life or the life of your family. Do what they say. Comply with them. Remember, they have a plan. Let's keep them to their plan. They're already scared. They're already hyped up. We don't want to make that worse. If you start interfering with their plan, they're going to hit you with whatever's in their hand. They're going to push you. They're going to do what they need to do to scare you to give them what they want. So just give it to them, okay? Let's just give it to them and then get them out of your house, call the police, and you can be safe once again. Do you think that there's any type of circumstance that would be appropriate to attack the invaders? Before, I used to tell people, run and hide. Now, with the Orlando shooting, the Fresno shooting that you spoke of earlier, all these different scenarios that we're now seeing, we're now at a time where we have to attack. So if you are in a position where you know that your assailant is going to hurt you or one of your family members, you need to arm yourself with whatever you can arm yourself with and attack them. Right. Hopefully this attack will scare them enough to get away. But we as police officers will generally say only attack when you feel your life or the lives of others are in jeopardy. So let's say everything's done, the family's safe. What is it that we want to do in the aftermath of a home invasion? First thing you want to do is call the police. Get us coming to your house, okay? We can take care of everything else. Because if we have a home invasion, I'm going to bring the fire department and the paramedics because I want to make sure if you have any injuries, you're going to be treated right away. But also, our dispatchers are going to be asking you a lot of information about your assailants, the vehicles they're in, and the direction that they left in. You may think that, I just want the police here. Stop asking me these questions. Well, we need these questions. I'll give you an example. I had a jewelry robbery where the jewelry manager gave us all this information that we were looking for. One of our patrol units ran into that car a mile away from the actual robbery and we caught the suspects. These suspects were part of a jewelry ring where they had done over a dozen um, smash and grab jewelry robberies. Well, that information, had we not received it, they would have driven right by the police officer and we would never have caught them and they would have been able to do another jewelry robbery. Exactly. When you go to the aftermath of a home invasion, how are the families or the individual, I would think there'd just be a lot of trauma there. Um, so what do, you, what do you find when you go into the aftermath? The trauma that I have witnessed is horrible Yeah. because first thing is these people no longer feel safe in their home. And no matter how many cops are in their house doing this investigation, they just feel like a part of them has been taken away and they're never going to have that peace of mind or that security. Home invasions are obviously horrible. But I've also witnessed this similar trauma, even for a burglary where the homeowner comes home to a, their house that's been ransacked. They didn't see the people robbing them or burglarizing them, but they walked into this. And that trauma that's there, that they're never safe or they're going to be safe again. We recommend that they need to talk to people. That's what they need to do. Maybe even seek out a psychologist or psychiatrist to talk about that emotional trauma that they have just gone through. That's going to help them to heal. That's probably one of the single most important things and that's why I always tell my officers when they're responding to calls like this, they have to respond empathetically because these people are, have just been through so much and the amount of trauma, I don't think we can ever measure it, that what they've gone through. No, it's horrific uh, in the aftermath and people are feeling so vulnerable and, and unfortunately, like you said, that can last a long, long time after the, the break-in. That's correct, and actually, there have been studies where people have thought they were okay, and then something triggers the response that they had years prior yeah. that causes them some heartache or some problem. So yes, that's why we tell them that they should try to get some help to deal with that emotional trauma. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate some very good insights. Thank you, Bobby. So let's recap. To prevent a home invasion, install a high-tech security system with live monitoring. And if your home is vacated, have uniformed guards on site or patrolling in security vehicles. Fortify all entries, the doors, the windows, and make it hard for anyone to break in. Don't ever let your guard down. Do not open the door for anyone unless you know it's 100% safe. Keep a close watch on your property. Beware what you post on social media. Be prepared. Install a panic button in every room. 
Practice drills with your family so everyone knows what to do in the worst case scenarios. It's no different than preparing for a natural disaster. And if you are invaded, and especially if your invaders are armed, don't try to be a hero. Just comply. Only fight back if that's your only chance for survival. And then call the police the minute they leave and provide a description of your assailants. I'm your host, Bobby Marqueso. For more prevention, preparedness, and survival tips from our experts, subscribe to our channel and be sure to click on the bell icon for instant notifications. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next ACS Safety First video.